Mr. Speaker, let me tell you where I will not be on Inauguration Day. I will not be here or outside at the inauguration ceremony. I will be in Washington late that evening because the event I'm going to is on January 21st. It's the Women's March on Washington. You can get more information on Facebook, which is how I heard about it. Or I should I say how my wife said I heard about it. I said to her a little after the election, I said, you know, honey, I don't think I can go to D.C. and watch Donald Trump get sworn in. And she said, oh, you're going to D.C., just not for that. And she told me about the Women's March. She said, you and I are going together. Now, I can already hear the phones ringing in my office with people calling to say, oh, you Democrats are sore losers and you just hate Republicans. No, I went to George Bush's inauguration and I work with Republicans all the time. Just read Breitbart, which seems to write an article anytime I even glance favorably at a Republican colleague. But this is different. I knew that George W. Bush and I would disagree on many issues, from trade to health care to the war in Iraq. But I never thought that George W. Bush was trying to make my own country hostile to me, personally, to my wife, to my daughters, to my grandson. I never felt he was a threat to the nation that I love so deeply and have served now for nearly a quarter of a century. The reason I'm not going is that I can't bring myself to justify morally or intellectually the immense power we are placing in that man's hands. I could not look at my wife, my daughters, or my grandson in the eye if I sat there and attended. Is that everything that the candidate said about the women, about the Latinos, the blacks, the Muslims, or any of the other things he said in those speeches and tweets, and that all of that is okay or erased from our collective memory? We all heard the tape when Donald Trump was bragging, bragging about grabbing women by their private parts without their consent. It is something I just can't unhear. Bragging to that guy on TV that he would grab women below the belt as if that was hitting on them. Sorry, it's never okay. It is never just locker room talk. It's offensive. And if actually did it, it's a crime. I hang out with Republicans, with Republican elected officials in an actual locker room in the Rayburn building. And if they ever started talking like that, I wouldn't just walk away. I would tell them to their faces that they're wrong and I wouldn't allow it to go unnoticed or dismissed as normal or excusable. I don't know a Republican colleague of mine in this body who would let that type of comment just slide as if it were just okay. So that's why I will hold hands with my wife and march with the women on January 21st in D.C. And that is why I'm calling on all of my progressive allies to come and march with the women as well. If you care about a living wage, come and join the women. If you care about the environment, come and join the march. You know, as a society, when women win, we all win. So I plan to be there. It is deeply personal and deeply patriotic to march to make my opinions know by walking with my allies arm in arm. I want to look and be able to look at my two beautiful Latina daughters and my beautiful half Puerto Rican, half Mexican, but 100% American grandson, Luis Andres, in the eye with a clear conscience. When the new president denigrates Latinos or Mexicans or immigrants as drug dealers and criminals, I want to be able to say that I did not condone or allow that type of speech to go mainstream. That was not normalized on my watch. Because the future president said that the American-born children of immigrants were not capable of being American judges, I cannot sit there as if this inauguration is okay and I forgave him. I'm deeply honored to return to the U.S. Congress, and I want to thank the people of the 4th Congressional District. My constituents knew that when they voted for me, I would be a fighter, and I don't intend to let them down. If the new president comes for the Muslims, I will be Muslim. If they come for Planned Parenthood, I will stand with Planned Parenthood. When they deny climate science, I will make my voice heard. I will use whatever peaceful means available to make sure the words and the actions of our new president do not become the new mainstream and normal in America. And for that, Mr. Speaker, is why I will not be here for Inauguration Day and why I will be marching with my wife and with a million women from across this country.